This podcast is proud to be part of the TalkSport Fan Network. TalkSport. Powered by fans. Now on Broadway, an enemy of the people is a New York Times critic's pick. Jeremy Strong is one of the great actors of his generation, hails the Chicago Tribune. In a performance, the Wall Street Journal praises as powerfully affecting and bitterly funny. Michael Imperioli sets off sparks, cheers the Hollywood Reporter. Victoria Pedretti is luminous, raves variety. From director Sam Gold and playwright Amy Herzog, an enemy of the people is urgent, electrifying, and haunting, declares USA Today. An enemy of the people, on Broadway through June 16th only. The TalkSport Fan Network is proudly supported by McDelivery, bringing you the food you love. McDelivery brings a top-tier lineup of food right to your door. No matter the results, you'll always be winning with McDelivery. Order now on the McDonald's app and you'll get rewards points delivered too. So that ordering today means some tasty rewards for tomorrow. Only via app at participating restaurants. 18 plus rewards registration required. Points only on menu items, delivery fee and terms apply. See mcdonalds.com. So hi and welcome to another edition of The Away End. I'm Craig Courtney and I am this evening joined by uh, Tom Eyre from the Rotherham United podcast, New York Talk. So um, Tom, thank you very much for for joining us. Uh, Mm -hmm. I know it's been a very busy week for you guys. Um, Similar to Birmingham, another manager um, Mm -hmm. and... uh, Obviously, unfortunately for yourselves, uh, already relegated from the championship and, and looking forward, shall we say, to uh, a, a Div 1 next season. Um, but um, yeah, uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, tell us a little bit about your podcast and uh, how long you've been going. Yeah, we've been going four or five years now. Uh, I only joined um, last year. We, we do it. Uh, we pre we preview some games. Uh, we look at some games afterwards. Uh, we interview some players. We managed to interview Matt Taylor, who was our prior manager. Um, in in the summer, we get some we get some good guests on. Um, yeah, we just talk all things Rotherham, which which this season hasn't been very positive, but <laughs> you, know, you, you take the rough with the smooth, I guess. Um, you, you've yeah, had a lot yeah. to talk about, though. That's the main thing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 We've had a lot of a lot of drama in the past couple past couple months. Um, hopefully, League One brings you know more fun times. Steve Evans as manager is is always a barrel of laughs and entertaining. So hopefully, hopefully it'll go well. But yeah, this season's not been it's not been the the prettiest sight seeing four four blokes absolutely <laughs> morally destroyed after every game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, as Birmingham fans, we've been used to that as well. So you know we haven't had much better. Um, yeah. Obviously, I mean you 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 mentioned it there, but but Steve Evans returned to to Rotherham, which has happened um, this week. I mean, as a fan, how how do you feel about it? You know, I mean, I'll be honest, managers coming back sometimes works, other times doesn't. You know, we we are back with Gary Rowett, albeit temporary at the moment, and you know things are are gradually turning round at Birmingham and after a. A phenomenal, that's all I could say, phenomenal result against Coventry. Uh mm. sadly just gone. It's, you know, looking forward obviously to to the final three games, two of which mm. are against one with ourselves and then the other against Huddersfield. So they are massive, massive for us and both away from home. But mm. how, how do you feel about Steve Evans coming back? I mean, was it a shock? Had you got any inkling it was happening, or was it just a bolt out of the blue? Um Richardson going was an absolute ball out of the blue. Um, Tony Stewart, the chairman, said, ah, must have been two, three weeks now that he was the man to take us into League One. He was the man to do the rebuild. Um, Richardson said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm, I want to prove myself. You know, all, everything was said that proved that Richardson would have until next season. So to wake up and see that Richardson was gone on a on a random Wednesday morning was a was a massive shock. But as soon as that news got leaked, well, I say leaked. As soon as it got um, put out into the media, um, it was it was only Steve Evans going to take over. Stephen is lost at the weekend, or they drew, I think maybe, um, which meant that they couldn't get top six, couldn't get playoffs. Um, there was a rumor about there's a there's a cause in Evans' co- Evans contract, which meant that 
we could get him on a as we're technically a championship club still we could get him on a on a cheap on a cheaper deal and he had to come mm -hmm. um well well Stephen had to let him talk to us so and it, and he wanted to come it seemed um he was uh, this apparently this conversation happened you know prior to the departure of Liam Richardson um so a bit of a shock but then the appointment of Steve Evans hasn't been really a shock and it's it's boosted a lot of fans um morale again he, he he really brought good times when he was at the club at first um a lot of talk about on on twitter about fans not renewing season tickets and i think mm -hmm. i think that hit yeah that hit the the hierarchy quite 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 hard because you know you, you always want to get the most revenue you know business is sometimes a thing i think he's brought in a lot of morale he's brought in uh, as the chairman called it rotherham dna which is which is you know take it as it is i guess um um it's it's something that you know um you know what you're going to get with him. Um, I think it's a I think it's a short term solution. Personally, I think long term we need to be looking at changing the culture and the, um, we need to be looking at different measures in place. But mm -hmm. short term, I, I, I yeah, he was the, he was the man. Short term, yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's interesting though the the way things have have gone and the way things have materialised because I, I'll be honest, when I heard that it was a a change in management, I was just like, I can't believe they've done it this time of season. You know, um, I can understand it at the end if managers and clubs can't agree it ultimately to to the terms of the way they want to take it forwards. But for it to happen with three games to go and the team's already relegated, it's it's a strange one. Um, mm. I'm hoping hoping you don't get the new manager bounce, as you can imagine. But um, <laughs> yeah. it, it yeah. will be uh, will be interesting on, on on Saturday. And I had heard. The speculation of fans boycotting the game ahead of the weekend, if things stayed the same, and and also, you know, nobody wants it to happen. But um, yeah, there I say, yeah. your friends at Sheffield, um, <laughs> you want to see them go down as as well. Um, so it, it was all about, oh, you know, we're going to lose the game. We don't care. You know that sort <laughs> of of uh, mm. situation. I know it's not the case. You know, it's all talk and all speculation. Yeah. But, you know, I'm not going to lie. I want you to lose. Um, <laughs> we're, yeah. still in, we're still in a fight. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, we'll come on to the game shortly. Um, mm. But mm. It, it, when we look over the past five games, actually, for a change, I'm able to say that Birmingham have won more games than anything else. <laughs> Um, so you know we've we've won two, we've drew two, and we've lost one against yourselves in mm. the past five that we've played. And um, obviously the last one was a was a nil nil at St Andrews at Knighthead Park uh, back in December. Um, mm. I remember the game well. It was dull. It was boring. It was yep. atrocious. <laughs> yeah, it was Rooney, uh, and that, that's that's all I can say. Um, yeah. And obviously yeah. things have progressed in T. He has uh, moved on, and mm -hmm. a lot's happened with ourselves since since that game as well. So, hoping we'll see a, a different performance on on Saturday. And I know we've got a, a, a great following coming down to yourselves as always. Um, yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah we'll we'll uh, not so we'll come on to that. But mm -hmm. yeah. I always talk about the clubs, and what I try and do is also find out a little bit around people's knowledge of players <laughs> representing yeah. both yeah. clubs. Yes. Now, when I first started looking at this, mm. I was thinking, oh, I can't remember anybody from Rotherham that's, that's played for Birmingham or vice versa. Yeah. It was only when I started looking at the transfers between the clubs, actually, that it, it came to light that you've had some pretty decent players that have represented both Birmingham uh, and yourselves, either be mm. on loans or, or uh, permanent moves. Mm. But also, you've got a lot spread across the, the areas that mm. games just resonate with me because I was mentioning them just a few weeks ago with a few of the other fans. Um, mm. But we'll test your knowledge first of all. So uh, <laughs> yeah. what yeah. I'm after is, can you name five players um, both, that have represented both clubs? And that can be a loan, that can be a mm -hmm. permanent move, um, yeah, so I'm like, whatever it may be. Yeah, um, right. One permanent that I definitely get out of the way is Wes Harding. Was was with you, Youth Academy. Right. Came, yeah, came straight, came to us, played over a hundred games, I think, overall for us. Moved on to Millwall um, in the summer, but 
did it did his job. He was he was okay. He was never world beating, but he was he was he was okay. Um, and then I've got a couple in the squad now that uh, we actually have in the squad now. Uh, Shane Ferguson, he Enjoy. was there. Yeah, he was there for eight or nine games. Can't can't comment on how he was with you guys. I, I... <laughs> I'd have loved loved to have signed him on a permanent deal uh, when we got him because yeah. he was he was on loan at the time from from Newcastle. So. I'd have loved to have taken him on a permanent. We didn't get the opportunity. And I think, he, if I remember rightly, he actually uh, signed for Millwall in that summer as mm. well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And obviously went on to have a to have a good spell at them. Um, Tyler Blackett is another one that was on loan. I think his loan was a little bit worse. Well, <laughs> I'll be honest. When Tyler Blackett signed for the club, it was, it was oh, great. I would get a Man United player and everything else. Mm. He's quite possibly the worst defender I've ever seen turn out for Birmingham. And and, and that's yeah. saying so we've had some poor players, but mm. he, his loan period just yeah, it didn't work out. Um yeah. it, it, it's it's one though, isn't it? When you look back over the time, he, he was the up and coming player, but he just he, I don't think he was ready at the time to, mm. to join. And mm. and really the loan wasn't right for him. Yes, yeah, yeah, which is peculiar because now with us he's he's one of our star defenders, which who knows? Maybe maybe that says more about us than it does. <laughs> than it does. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, he, he's he's fantastic. Really composed, good defender. Um, left footed, which is always nice. It's it's something that you always need. But yeah, I'm 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 aware that his time at Birmingham wasn't the uh, wasn't the cleanest, wasn't the wasn't the best, wasn't the best really? in his career. Um, and then the other one off the top of my head is Cohen Bramall. He was on loan with you as well from really? Arsenal, maybe. Arsenal, um, yeah. Again, only only a couple of games with you, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, again, I, I I don't think he made much of an impression. Um, it, it seems like he was a bit just a you know a bit player, so to say. Um, very again, quick. a youngster, I think joining and, and and trying to break in. You know, so, some some players have come in and, and hit the ground running, others just just haven't. And yeah, I think that is probably another incident. You know, of of, of them coming and just not not fitting mm. or jelly. But to be honest, we've been in relegation fights. So it's sometimes it's hard as well for youngsters to come into a team and actually be able to slot in and, and stamp a little bit of authority. So mm. I don't always put it down to the player not having the calibre. Sometimes mm. it's just the wrong fit at the wrong time. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, other than that, I'm I'm struggling. Like you say, off the top of your head, you think, oh, there's there must be lows. And then you think, actually, I, I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't fling them off. I'm not there's, sure. there's a few. I mean, I'll run for them now. So you've got the goalkeeper, um, Lee Camp. Lee Camp, yeah. Oh. David Stockdale as well, who, um, God, yeah. both representing both clubs. Um, yeah. Defenders, um, you know, you, you've mentioned two of what I'd already got down anyhow, but mm. another one is uh, it's Stephen Kelly, who spent some time with you on yeah. loan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, then we've got some midfielders and attacking players that have also crossed mm. the uh, the paths. So uh, Tom Adiyamo, I mentioned in his name again. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I with yourselves, I mentioned him yeah. the other week with Cardiff. Same as Lee Camp, actually. You know, it, it, yeah. it was uh, strange to see those two. Um, yeah, he, he was good. Adi, uh, Tom Adiyamo, he was he was yeah. he, he played played a season, I think, for us on loan, and I think a lot of our fans wanted him to sign permanently, similar to Shane Ferguson. I'm so sure, sure with you, but yeah, it, it wasn't to be, and you know, he was he was good. He was a good player, but retired now, unfortunately. I think, and I don't yes. think he's I don't think he's too old in his career. I think he, you know, early thirties, late twenties. Well, I don't know, but either way, I think he, yeah, injuries got the better of him. I think indeed. And then you know, a few other players to shout out: Andrew Shinney. He was phenomenal mm -hmm. when he was at Birmingham and obviously came across himself. Yeah. Matt Derbyshire had a loan spell uh -huh. at Birmingham yeah. and also played yeah. with yourselves. Um, mm, Wes Thomas. Sure. Yes. Um, yes. Another player that, that came with a lot of expectations at Birmingham and didn't didn't really hit the ground running. Mm. Um, Mark Burchill. Uh, I think we both had them on loan as well. He was up in mm. Scotland and he came to, to Birmingham and to, to your good selves. Mm. Um, then Greg Helford going back. Oh and, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, Didn't realize he played for Birmingham. Curtis Woodhouse as well. Um, you yeah. Know. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like you say, quite a few. <laughs> the ones that when you first think about it, it's yeah. <laughs> one that's 
I, I've got to say, this is a tedious link. Uh, if mm. you'd have got this, I'd have been majorly impressed. And that's Will Grigg. And Will Grigg played quite a bit for yourselves, I believe, but yeah. was part of our academy. So he came out. Oh, of the okay. And that was where I got the uh, the link for for those. So, you know, we've, we've had a mixture of players. Again, all, all positions across the pack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, we, we that's the thing. Sometimes it gets to a point with championship players where they, they've just played for everyone, haven't they? Yeah, <laughs> so, um, yeah. George, Jordan Hugo for us this season seems to only score against teams he's played against, which unfortunately isn't <laughs> a lot, but it's, it's you know, four. <laughs> <or five. laughs> um, well, yeah. I mean, we had um, uh, just the other week, uh, we 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 had uh, our ex captain in Harley Dean join us, and um, yeah. I always remember his his goal at, at your place and and the you know the the bullet of a header. I think if I remember rightly, it was during COVID, or mm. it was just as COVID had ended. Um, yeah, I think I remember Cole seeing the stadium being empty. Um, yeah, <laughs> last week. <laughs> well, it's one of our relegation fighting seasons. Surprise, surprise! Yeah. You know, um, yeah. we got relegated fight. COVID season, so I think that's yeah. right. I think if I remember rightly, actually, wasn't that the game? Now on Broadway, an enemy of the people is a New York Times critic's pick. Jeremy Strong is one of the great actors of his generation, hails the Chicago Tribune. In a performance, the Wall Street Journal praises as powerfully affecting and bitterly funny. Michael Imperioli sets off sparks, cheers the Hollywood Reporter. Victoria Pedretti is luminous, raves variety. From director Sam Gold and playwright Amy Herzog, an enemy of the people is urgent, electrifying, and haunting, declares USA Today. An enemy of the people, on Broadway through June 16th only. Picture the scene. All of your mates around, you've got your McNugget share boxes ready to go. Partner this with your team playing champagne football. Perfect. Order McDelivery now on the McDonald's app. There's nothing quite like a McDelivery. At participating restaurants, 18 plus, serving times, delivery fee and terms apply. See mcdonalds.com. The Put the final nail in the coffin as such, and that, that was when you were relegated. I could be wrong, it might have been the game afterwards, but I know it's close. We we got I think we got officially relegated last game of the season against Cardiff. Um, I remember Marlon Pack who's just gone up with Portsmouth scoring a like eighty third minute equaliser, which essentially sent us down. We had to win the game. Um, so yeah, but I think it was one of the last three or so games, and I think mm. it was a pretty even contest. And then out of nowhere, Harley Dean comes in with a with a fantastic header, and yeah, puts it. I think it. Put us, I think it put us down because we needed a result in the next game, which we didn't expect, and, and we got one. Um, so it was it was, a yeah. bullet header. He was, yeah. you know, I used it as the snippet actually for the introduction of him yeah. when he was, you know, showed him coming on into to, to the show. So it was, it was good to to recall that one. But I mean, one of the you know, I normally look as well, mm. a managerial or coaching staff, and you know, we've had no overlaps. It's, yeah. um yeah. An interesting one to say the least, because like you say, we have a lot of players that overlap in the leagues, but we, we haven't had the management. Um, mm. Yeah. But, uh, you know. It, yeah. It, you bank on Neil Warnock, don't you, for that one? <laughs> yeah. Normally, <laughs> so, this is going to be yeah. it. Um, yeah. or, or we see some sort of, like, outside link. You know, Johnny yeah. Lucas was one that, that was linked with quite a few clubs because of players and coaching roles. And then, of course, he, he was in Birmingham. We could never say about Rooney because God, yeah. if, if, if he manages again, I'll be surprised, even though he seems to be going to. Yeah, um, yeah. He seems but like he won't. We do. And, and, and so this weekend, um, tough game uh, for, mm. for, for Birmingham. You know, uh, I think the new manager bounce, as we've mentioned, that, that could occur. And mm. I think the fans will be wanting to get behind, you know, Steve Evans in his, his first game back, in effect. Mm. Um, but how do you see it going? And, and, you know, you've mentioned a couple of players already, but mm. who, who should we watch out for as as a Birmingham team? And where do you think strengths are? Because I know I know you're relegated and things, but there's mm. still strengths in the team. You're still mm. capable of beating teams. You know, it's not as though you're not going out and putting out performances against some of the big wigs. Because I've seen I've seen it, and how you've, you you have got the results against them. So, mm. who should we watch out for? And where do you think ultimately the, the the play will come from on Saturday? Come on to results after. Yeah, it's, it's a good question because you know you 
watching us week in week out you think that we're never going to be able to actually do anything with <laughs> with the ball it's it's fantastic but you know putting it in perspective it's very much a uh, um we, we 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 really dominate in the air and i think that's a very stereotypical thing to say about rotherham but we do definitely balls into the box you know we attack we we attack them well um it's where our two goals came from against millwall when we won 2-1 um yep. just just balls into the box lucky ricochets rebounds whatever might happen whatever happens happens sort of thing in in the box and and that's what you've got to pray off um i think danger man it's, it's a difficult one because no one really stands out um kafu is a fantastic player on his day um from nottingham forest he's he's um technically the best player that we we have at the club i reckon with the ball at his feet but the work rate doesn't match unfortunately and the effort doesn't always go into the execution and and he can go missing um so it depends if he turns up uh, he's one that you've got to you've got to you've got to watch for um sam Klukas is probably the one that i'd say is you know you'd, you'd get a consistent seven out of ten with him and obviously the keeper but you know <laughs> it's very difficult to say look out for the keeper uh you know <laughs> But yeah, no, Victor Johansson has been fantastic. Will will not be with us next season. We'll be top top end championship, lower end Premier League, and everyone no people have known that for months now. And yeah, you, you hopefully you don't get to see him firsthand. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I I can imagine that he'll pull out one or two saves where you'll just think, oh my god, how has he done that sort of thing? Um, I just want to see him picking the ball out in it. If I'm honest, <laughs> exactly, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, um. Yeah, in regards to actual creativity, um, work rate, someone that will, will, will that will disrupt things. It'll it'll be Cafu or Klukas. Um, just little moments of quality that we have in a in a pretty dire season. They've 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 given us some sort of attacking presence, which is you know it's it may sound like I'm really harsh on on Rotherham here and and whatnot, but watching us all season and in you guys will get to watch us on Saturday. It's it's not a pleasant sight to see us play football sometimes. Um, hopefully it changes with the new manager. Hopefully there's a bit more oomph, a bit more fight and passion. But um, currently, yeah, um, I, c- I can only see us attacking down the wings, balls into the box and hoping that something comes from it, really. I think it, it'll be interesting to see how Birmingham um, do turn out because... I take it a couple of weeks ago, you know, defensively, we looked so ropey. And like you're saying there, lumping the ball into the middle. I I, I turned around and said, you know, if you were doing that, you'd have you'd have scored. But then I look mm-hmm. at the way our defence was against Coventry. Um, and, and it didn't look as though anybody was going to get anything past us. You know, they, they were just solid. And so I don't know, in all honesty, how, how Birmingham will set themselves up on, on Saturday. Um, there is a tendency for Rowett to like to play with with three uh, across the, the back in the middle and then having two wing backs. Um, will that work on Saturday? I don't know. It's it depends. We also, I've got to say, uh, I tend to see Birmingham playing a lot better when teams come and attack us because the counter attack side of it, you know, we've got pace on both sides. We've got two. Um, wingbacks arguably that, that can overlap yeah. as well across the midfield which is absolutely superb and mm. you know Ethan Laird at the moment he blows hot and cold but when he is on the game he mm. is uh, he is absolutely phenomenal and he gets yeah. people going he gets gets up there he's not afraid to take a player on he's not afraid to to whip in across and he, his work rate is, is second to none mm. and then look across our midfield and, you know, um, Bielik. Bielik has been backwards and forwards into the defence, back into midfield. On Saturday, he played in the, in defence and he, he arguably had his best game. He could got an eye to knock the ball forward, so we've got an outlay coming out from the uh, these defensive side of things. But also, he can get the tackles in um, mm. and, and he puts his head in as well. Mm. And then striking, you know, you've got to look at it. Stansfield at the moment. He is just, his confidence is back. So yeah. whenever he's given the ball, um, he, 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 you know, probably nine times out of ten, he'll put it away yeah. if he's given the opportunity. And, the way, yeah. and what we saw against Coventry was a phenomenal link-up and mm. probably the best game that we've seen Tyler Roberts play for Birmingham. 
Um, oh, very good. Yeah, yeah. Season. So yeah. he, I was he was them. setting up Stansfield's goal on the third for Birmingham. And um, yeah, it's, it, it, it's looking promising there. And I think the other thing is, cross midfield, we will probably see Sonich playing again. He was mm. brilliant on Saturday, scored the, uh, the second goal um, and was, was argu- again, probably arguably his best game of the season. Um, mm. And then finally, on the opposite wing, Keshi Anderson, he came into his own on Saturday as well. He was he okay. was unplayable. Yeah. Um, instrumental behind the first goal, was there again involved with the with the second. So mm. it's going to, it's, it is going to be interesting, you know, to see how they set up, how they come forward. Personally, I'd like to see them sticking with the same team as as against Coventry. Yeah. If they do, and they play the style of football, and they they attack the way that they did, mm. then you know we could we could see goals in the game. Mm. But then again, if we turn up the way that we did a couple of weeks ago against uh, Cardiff, for example, then you know I, I wouldn't want to wouldn't want to call it. But it's it's a tough game. Mm. We've got to come down and we've got to get a result. Plain and simple, you know, we are still in a relegation fight. Whilst yeah. we're outside of that bottom three, and that was mm. nice, nice to feel at the end of Saturday. Mm. Even better to see Huddersfield conceding in the 110th minute, but you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. isn't it yeah. always controversial call as well? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but we'll we'll see. So, yeah, billion dollar it's, question. Then, give us your well, prediction. Prediction. Wow. Um, and I guarantee your head says one thing, your heart says another. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say that, so I'll I'll avoid that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was, it's it's tough. I think, honestly, I can see more of a performance against you than I could with, with under Richardson. I think Evans will get a lot, as much as he can out of them, but I I don't think these players are good enough to play at championship level. I don't, I think, I think although I want us to, to win, I think new manager bounce helps and I think Evans will try and get much. I can't see it happening. I can see a two-one Birmingham, three-one Birmingham happening. Um, which you know, if you if anyone wants to tune into our podcast, this is exactly what it's like every week. <laughs> Predictions. Are, um, yeah, I predict us to lose every week, so it's great. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's um, yeah, I can I can see a two-one, three-one Birmingham. I think it'll be a close game. I think I think we are. I think we'll be on the up, and I think you will be nervy, especially mm. if, we, if we get into your face, aggressive. Um, but I think the quality is, is just too much for us uh, with our current squad. I mean, those players that you were mentioning just then, and you didn't mention um, Siri, Siriki Dembele and, and Jordan, like, yeah. you know, two fantastic players who I thought would be your star men and just, you know, not even near the starting eleven, which goes to show, you know, the difference in quality between us at the bottom, and very deservedly at the bottom, and you guys a little in the relegation dogfight, you know, we wouldn't, in hindsight, we were never we were never challenging this season to to stay up, and it's it's a shame. But yeah, no, I I think I think it'll be a I think it'll be a close game, a tight game. But I think I think Birmingham will see it out two one, three one maybe. Do you know, you are the first person I had a feeling ever yeah. uh, <laughs> back against their own team as I've done one of these these podcasts. Um, oh, in that case, uh, I change it. I change it. <laughs> <laughs> I do get why you say it though, and and yeah. I'll be honest, there have been times when. My my head has done that. It's you know yeah. Oh, I want us to go out. I want us to get a result, but I just can't see it coming. And then my heart's going, yeah, we're gonna. Um, but it, it it didn't come to fruition. I mean, the plain and simple side is, if we turn out as a team as we did against Cardiff, then it'll be a lot closer than than what you've said there. You know, because yeah. we were very 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 poor against Cardiff, um, mm. which didn't turn up. Mm. But if the team that turned out against Coventry ends up playing and playing the way that they did, then yes, there'll be goals. Um, and at which point, the only thing I would say is, based on the way the defence was against Carver, I couldn't see us conceding. Um, mm. So I'd, I'd go, you know, I want to say 2-3-0. Oh, I'm not going to lie, I'd love to see a 4-5, you know, because we just haven't done it. I wouldn't. <laughs> um, but I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, and I don't like predicting that high because, <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you know, I just don't um, I, I don't, yeah, completely know what you mean. I don't like predicting us to lose by that much either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Rowett will have them, 
as will uh, obviously Paul Robinson uh, being mm. in the coaching staff. They will have them fired up going into this game. You know, they will have that drive and passion off the back of the the Cov game to take forwards. They have that knowledge that actually we can pull ourselves a little bit further away because I think a couple of the games aren't until Sunday. Um, mm. I believe Chef Wednesday, I think, is, is when uh, Sunday. So that will give us an opportunity again to just have that little bit of mental stimulus that that says, actually, you know what, we're, we're close to this. We're, we're going to get out of it and we're going to stay out of it. So, yeah, my, my, I'll go with a, I'll go with a three nil. Mm. Uh, but like I said, I'd love nothing more for it to be four or five. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and there's, it's there's against anyone, it would be us. <laughs> well, there's one person on our podcast that um, made a statement last season, which was if Birmingham ever scored six goals, he was going to do the podcast in the buff. So, <laughs> um, you know, we, we've never got anywhere close to it, but you never know. It might happen this weekend and he will be. He will be scared if he's 3-0 at half-time, put it that way. Uh, yeah, yeah, he will. And the worst thing about it is that it's recorded. It's a podcast. You can't go back on it. Exactly, you can't go back on it. <laughs> um, so, I mean, firstly, I, I know you've gone down from the Championship. Nobody likes ever seeing a team relegated. But look, good luck for next season. And I hope you. you can have the run in, in, in Div 1 that helps you get back up into mm -hmm. into the championship um mm -hmm. i do hope that uh your season ends on a little bit of a high apart from saturday and i'm gonna <laughs> say it always on yeah. the first game um mm -hmm. but you know good good luck going into next season uh and let's hope that that robin can get back up into the championship and uh, uh let's hope let's hope thank you <laughs> fingers crossed <laughs> but thank you very much for joining us um, yes no thank you for having me it's been very good it's been very no nice. no worries and uh, sign off as I do with everybody else and just say, you know, good luck for the rest of the season, but not on Saturday and keep right on. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Away days are great, but there's nothing quite like playing at home. The same goes for McDonald's. Maximize your home ground advantage with Muck Delivery. Order now on the McDonald's app. At participating restaurants, 18 plus serving times, delivery fee, and terms apply. See McDonald's.com. Hey, it's Danny Pellegrino from Everything Iconic. Ready to upgrade your style game without blowing your budget? Check out Quince. They've got all the good stuff shirts and polos, activewear, and fine leather goods all at 50 to 80% less than other high-end brands. And the best part? They're all about safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing. Get that luxury vibe without the luxury price tag. Hit up quince.com slash upgrade for free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince.com slash upgrade. This podcast is proud to be part of the TalkSport Fan Network. TalkSport. Powered by fans.